As Jesus spoke of these days, he said there will be a time of great tribulation such as the world has never seen before or will ever see again. In these final judgments, uh, you're going to see just unspeakable things. Uh, and it's interesting that when these judgments are being unleashed, that the angels are declaring the righteousness of God in these judgments. Uh, that uh, they've shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and you've given them blood to drink, for they deserve it. And I heard another angel uh, saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. God is a just God. And a lot of times there are people who sort of challenge the justice of God. A lot of times you hear questions such as, well, is it fair for God to do this or to do that? And when you read of these judgments, is it fair for God to send such judgments upon the earth? But the judgments of God are righteous and true. And it is interesting to me that in the midst of the calamities and uh, all that are taking place, there's going to be the reaffirmation of the righteousness of God, of the judgments of God, how that they are right and uh, that, that he judges as he does and... Uh, Righteous are thy judgments, just the confirming of that. And the fourth angel poured out his bowl upon the sun. Power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not, to give him glory. So, possibly the sun will go into a supernova. Now, our astronomers, as they observe our universe, observe stars that they call go into a supernova. That is, they are increasing in brightness and continue to increase in brightness until ultimately they, they go out. It's sort of like uh, if you break the glass on a light bulb and the oxygen hits the element, how the light will go real bright and then, of course, the element will uh, be burned and the light goes out. And it seems like there is this kind of a phenomena in stars in the supernova. And of course, it is interesting that uh, you'll read about this particular star going into a supernova, and they are reporting about it, and it sounds like it was happening this week, or it happened, you know, this, this last year. But in reality, it takes so long for the light of that star to get here that it actually happened a million years ago. We're just now observing it. Uh, but uh, it would seem that perhaps the sun will go into a supernova, uh, which of course would just, well, you thought it was hot today. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it would, you know, create such intense heat here on the earth uh, that... Uh, and the reaction of man to me is interesting in that um, here they are being scorched with this great heat. And what do they do? They blaspheme the name of God. They're cursing God for it, who had the power over these plagues. And they did not repent to give him glory. Again, as we said this morning, you wonder what it takes to cause some men to repent. Surely you would think that when God's judgments 
are such in the land that people would be repenting and turning to God and yet they refuse to do so. Their hearts are so hardened against the Lord. Verse 10, the fifth angel poured out his bowl upon the throne of the beast, that is the Antichrist, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. Now the kingdom full of darkness, when a star goes into a nova, then it, it then dims out tremendously. In fact, it, we, we can't see them in the telescopes any longer. But the fifth angel poured out his vial on the throne of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues for pain. And they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and they repented not of their deeds. The sores came in the first bowl, you remember, back in verse 2. Uh, this noisome and grease, grievous so, sore upon men and they are still suffering from these sores when the fifth angel is pouring out his vial on the throne of the beast and darkness covers the area. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. The Bible tells us that there are going to be signs in the sun and in the heavens uh, and we remember that with the land of Egypt God brought darkness over the land a darkness so dark that it could be felt. Now, we get to this sixth angel, and the river Euphrates dried up to prepare the way for the kings of the east uh, might be prepared. There is, well, let's just go on into the next phase, and then we'll uh, take a look at what's coming. I saw the three unclean spirits, they were like frogs, they came out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, he said, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that is watching, keeps his garment, lest they walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Har Megeddon. The Antichrist, and we're just going to put together scriptures from uh, different places in the Bible, they are all tying together in this great event that is yet to take place, uh, the final battle uh, of, of man. Uh, we've seen a lot of wars. Jesus said that there will be wars and rumors of more wars. Don't be dismayed. Uh, but then he talks about world wars, nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And we've seen two of those. Um, and... Uh, there are still those alive who have seen both of these wars. The Antichrist is going to pretty much control uh, the Western nations, Europe and the Roman Empire, or those nations that made up the Roman Empire, will be his base of power. He will seek to conquer Africa with his troops. They pass through, they take Egypt, 
They're at the borders of Ethiopia and the border of